I was in New York City last night. I flew in this morning to Kingston, and I happened to just be in the Apple store. An elderly gentleman is like photographing me, but pretending like he, I shouldn't see him, right? <laughs> like, he's got his cell phone doing things. And, and he was actually politely waiting for me to finish a conversation I was having, and then he came up to me and says, I caught you before you go to Jamaica. <laughs> So he knew that I was coming to Jamaica, he's Jamaican, and so there must have been some Jamaican news network that went completely through the whole community. Uh, so I was very impressed that he knew where I should be. Uh, the last time I, I, I thought about Jamaica numerically was during the Olympics, and I wanted to sort of measure that in some kind of way. Because it's too easy to just cheer it. Of course, you're going to cheer your heroes. But is there some scientific way to understand what we were witnessing? You know, the United States had so many medals, and China had so many medals. I said, well, suppose Jamaica had the same population as these other countries, and then won medals at sort of the same rate that they have been given the population they have. If that were the case, how many medals would Jamaica have won? 1,382 medals. <laughs> Jamaica would be number one in the Olympics for medals per capita. So I just wanted you to know that. Okay? But most of what you'll hear today is not in any book. It's, it's not in any book. Because I don't like giving book talks because you just read the book. What do you need me for? If I'm here with you, I'm going to talk about stuff that doesn't show up in a book. All right? That way we get something fresh to think about. And just, to, just so we're on the same page here, right now, as I speak, there's an SUV-sized rover exploring Mars. What else we've got going? There's a probe en route to Pluto. There's a probe orbiting Saturn. There's a probe in orbit around Mercury. We found Goldilocks Earth-like planets orbiting sun-like stars in the galaxy. All this is going on right now. Uh, we found the largest black hole ever. You might that hit the news for a couple of days there. Um, and there's an asteroid headed our way. So if there's time at the end, maybe we'll, we'll talk about that. If you, <laughs> uh, all the familiar nations are there. They're color coded by region. But Japan is over here on the right. China, India, the continent of Africa. Europe is color-coded by Western Europe and countries that were formerly the Eastern Bloc is North America, you got it. All right, let's take a look at something. Let's look at trend lines in the world. Let us change the area of each country according to how much science is conducted in each country. So in other words, if you're a country where you do a lot of science, your will distort you to make you larger than your native size on this map. If you're doing less science than the average, it will make you smaller. So that at a glance, you will see where the science is being done in the world. Okay? Let's do that. You got this image of this map? Here we go. Whoa. Okay. A couple of things to notice. Africa practically disappears. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's tragic. It's only laughable because it's so tragic, right? Africa practically disappears. What is this over here? Japan! The United States looking fat and happy there in North America. South America, what do we have? We have uh, Brazil, we have Argentina, two leading um, technology places. There's no data, reliable data on Australia, so that one stays there. Uh, China doesn't look as big as you might have thought it would be, given all the news on China. Okay, well, a couple of things. What's interesting to me about this map is that it, it is practically a map of wealth of longevity. 
of all the things that modern living cares about, it tracks one-for-one one investments in science. 